Pregame.com. Baltimore minus seven and a half at Jacksonville. Monday night football. Game I've been dreaming about. <laughs> All right. To me, this play is simple. I lean dog here, and it's a historical, it's a mathematical play. Let me leave with the stat. Is home dogs greater than seven? And since 1989, 158 and 128. 55.2%. If all you've done is say, give me every home dog that's getting more than a touchdown, you're going to have made some real, you could probably have a, a pool, let's call it, let's say. You better <laughs> dime a game on that, probably more. My question is, is it just as simple as saying, listen, I'm never going to lay a touchdown on the road. Yeah, I know everyone, I never want to say never. Mm -hmm. But let's think about what it means to buck that trend. Because you've got 20 plus years You've got almost 300 games. This is real, this is math at this point. Is to get to 52.4, which is break even when you lay of 11 to 10, you've got to have 7.6% of handicapping edge. You've got to say, I see things in this game that the market doesn't to the tune of 7.6% to break even. Okay? Now, assume 55% is where you want to be to have enough margin of safety to actually profit long term. So you add another almost, well, 2.5%, 2.6%. You're looking at over 10% of handicapping edge that you require. That means if it was a game with no inherent bias, which is what the plus 7.5 or more is, if it was just a clean game at Pick'em, you'd be able to hit 60%, 10 plus percentage points, if your handicapping ability to see, you know, a mispricing, who in the heck has the ability to define 10% of mispricing? I personally think all you can do here is play the dog or pass, at least on the side. You've been doing this 32 years. What do you think? Well, it's funny that that's the stat you led with because my notes, my first thing is old school, this would be an automatic home dog play. What I'm going to tell you, you're exactly right with your numbers. If you went back, and I, and I don't have the numbers in front of me, but I can guarantee you this from memory, if you took that and took it, divided this it in half. This doesn't have anything to do with Monday Night Football. This, this is strictly is, home. You didn't home. think there was 300 times there was a double-digit dog in Monday Night Football. Okay, you? well. Or, yeah. or a seven-point plus Okay, dog. about, gotcha. One All thing right, I was so going to say Monday, is that Monday On night, Monday night, that home dogs of greater than seven are only 11 and 11. So it's completely down the middle, but a sample size of 22 doesn't tell you anything. So I think we can ignore that. Though, in truth, the question is this, and, and your point I think is valid, which is the old play the home dog on Monday night, the market's adjusted for that. Exactly. But my question is, has it adjusted for that when the dog is this ugly? Because I get the public's a little more willing to take two and a half points you know, when it's the Redskins against the Eagles or whatever. Right. But you've got the, the, literally the worst team in the NFL. The odds makers poll has Jacksonville as the worst team in the NFL. I'm not going to argue with no. that. Is I don't think people are lined up to say, hey, I see value. I think this is a situation where it's hard to play anything but the dog. The only thing that I, one point there, and, and, and right now I'm still up in the air in the game, but one of the points that bothers me of not to take the dog here is we're both Pittsburgh guys. And as Pittsburgh guys, we were obsessed with the Baltimore Ravens because they're our main, you know, challenger. I'm not obsessed. Well, with, they've never won a big game against us. <laughs> they're, they've been on. They're obsessed with us. Well, uh, that's where I'm going with it. But we're familiar with them as they are with us. And, the obsession is more on their end. Everything they've done is to try to build their team. The fat to be girl's obsessed with the pretty girl. <laughs> All right. But you're getting the point. They look at what we do, mm -hmm. and they do everything to try to one-up us. The fact that the Steelers played Jacksonville last week and it was a close game, is going to get Baltimore's attention. That they oh, will man. not come this into is this some, This is a wacky psychology. It, it, it's a situation where they're not going to look 
past Jacksonville because that's part that's of that. It's a Monday night game. They're not going to look past them anyway, you would hope. You you would hope. You you would hope. But whenever you're so – if a team is so bad, sometimes you can't help but to feel, you know, we don't have to bring our A game and we can get by. But this is a situation because Pittsburgh didn't blow them out and came down to, you know, they had to stop a drive at the, you know, in the fourth quarter to seal the game. This is a situation Baltimore's going to have their attention. Okay. Um, Jacksonville defense, check this stat out. It came from uh, Phil Steele. Is the average number of first downs in the NFL this year about 20 per mm -hmm. team? Jacksonville has given up defensively 16 or fewer, so significantly less, five out of six games. Watching them against the Steelers, not a bad defense. Mm -hmm. right? Active. My, my thought is, is Jacksonville team's offense is horrendous. If you think that they're going to do okay, you know, that Baltimore's D is really playing well. I thought they'd be down this year, but it's hard to say that they are on defense. Maybe the play's the under here. You know, I, I lean dog... And, and I lean under, to be candid. But I, I got to say, after watching Pittsburgh at Jacksonville game, Pittsburgh-Jacksonville, defense isn't bad. Well, one of those, one of those things with that stat, and, and yeah, the Jacksonville's defense has not played that bad, uh, you know, for as bad as the offense has put them into situations. One thing about having lower scores with them in that smaller number on the first downs is Jacksonville is a team that does run the ball a ton which is going to shorten the game. Anytime you shorten the game, a good you're, point. you're shortening the possessions for not only yourself, but the opponent That's as well. That's a great point. And, and any stat that doesn't have a pace of a game element to it, you always got to consider that. And that's a great point. Great point. I also think if you profile these teams, it leans Baltimore, which you know makes me not love the dog here. Ravens have covered 15 of 21 against teams with a losing record. When they physically have the edge, they like to run it up. You've said that numerous times. They like to be the bully on the block. And Jacksonville has only covered 3 of 13 against teams with a winning record. So you've got a team that, that, that when they play a good team, doesn't keep it close. They did last week. One last question. The Steelers effect, and that's something you've talked a lot about. Pittsburgh is so physical mm -hmm. that usually the next week, the team has a physical hangover, and now you're playing another physical team. It seems like a Pittsburgh-Baltimore 1-2 is, is about as poor or is about as much of an influence physically as you're ever going to have. In that second half, they would have been beat on now six quarters against two of the most physical teams in the NFL. That it's a great point that they're playing them back-to-back. I will say the one thing about the, the Steelers stat on that. I used to preach that every single week, go against whoever the Steelers played. Last year was the first year that that stat did not work, and I think it came directly. You can thank the commissioner for, you know, the way they've yeah, taken see, that I off. I disagree with that. One, you've you got to be 16 games is such a small sample. And it's a situation where, yeah, you, there might not be that big hit in the secondary, but getting beat up. Is, is more about at the line every play and the running back getting that extra hard hit when it's a two-yard play. And, and to be candid with you, since Aaron Smith came out of the Steelers lineup, I think the D-line's been playing just as physically and just as aggressively as they did last year. Uh, you know, maybe 5% maybe less, but I wouldn't overreact to a 16-game seeming adjustment. All right, my projection here, I'm going to go 20-17 to 17 Baltimore. I like, you know, the more I think about it, I like the under more than I like the dog. But here's the thing. You can't lay seven on the plus on the road. It, it, there's just too much bias to overcome. You're going to win some. You're going to win 45 out of 100. But you've got to win 52.4 to break even. So to me, sometimes in these games, what the new school wise guys do is they don't automatically play. They say, I'm going to play the dog or I'm going to pass. And the fact that they shave off from 10% to 60% of these plays and they pick the 40 to 90% of them that they think have the handicap behind it too is how the new school guys do it and they win. Any closing thoughts? The only thing that I was going to say is one thing is that this line is sitting at seven and a half. It did open up higher, and the Sharps came in uh, and 
took, you know, they didn't wait. They, they took a, a bite of uh, Jacksonville at that price. They were getting eight and eight and a half. No, and, and it, yeah, it, it opened up at uh, eight and a half. This line was four in July, but that makes sense with the quarterback change. Yeah, you right. know, the adjustment here makes a ton of sense. All right, guys, exciting new, uh, it's actually, we're bringing out of the mothballs a, a fun little um, deal we have is we've been talking about all the videos this week is we have a form thread in which all the participants are discussing, all the participants in the videos are discussing every question that you have in this thread. All you got to do is go to pregamevideos.com and it will bring you directly to the thread each week and you can ask any questions about any of these videos. But here's the thing, on Monday for the rest of the season what we're going to do is in that same thread guess the score of the game. And if you get the score exactly right, and if there's no cost to do it, you're going to get $100 in pregame dollars to spend any way you want. So it's a free roll, and it'd be kind of fun for Brian Wrights if you can guess the score. You can do all that plus the questions at pregamevideos.com. Talk to you there.